Okay. Okay, this is Todd, and um, I'm in week two at GitLab. And to be honest, I'm still trying to figure out how to work remotely. And so I asked Sid today, hey, how does he manage his screens and what is he looking at? And the other thing we were just talking about is that most of, like there's not much email at GitLab. It's Slack, it's gitlab.com and Google Docs and Zoom, of course. So Sid, what are your, what are your tips? Yeah, no, let's not forget about the handbook, but uh, indeed, um, so you asked about my monitors. I, uh, I have a MacBook Pro and I have that stationed on the right. I got two big monitors, like 27 inch, just cheap ones, um, USB-C cable to those monitors. And uh, you asked about the layout. Um, I have, uh, I don't want to twist my head too much. So I have the most important screens in the middle monitor right in front of me. On the right hand side, I tend to have the video calling one. So I put my webcam a bit off to the side. I use an external webcam. Yeah. And that means I have eye contact with you. So okay. I, put, I put that screen in the top right. Then in the bottom right, I tend to have a, an editor window open. I have sublime text, but you can use anything. Just right. taking notes during interviews. So I can look down when I'm taking notes. It's, it's, it, it seems natural for the, for the, for the applicant or, or the candidate or whoever yeah. I'm talking to. On the left is the web browser. Like way too many tabs open. I think 30 now. Uh, it's most of the time just Chrome is there. On the left-hand side, I tend to have whatever the meeting is about. So if we're in a meeting, there's a... You can pull a tab out and put it over there. Yeah, pull a tab out, put it over there, the presentation, whatever. Right. Multi most of the time, I'm a bit multitasking, so I kind of work in the, in the browser, but I, I want to make sure that I can always kind of follow the structure of the meeting right. or any comments that are shared in that. I don't like Slack, the desktop client, so I use uh, Slack in the in the web browser. On the right hand side, I have my MacBook. Um, what don't MacBook. you like about the desktop client of Slack? I'm not sure it doesn't it doesn't work for me. I'm so much I'm always in the web browser, so that's my kind of primary screen. So I'm okay. cool with having just a tab open there. It's my leftmost tab. It works for me. Other people love the web browser, so your mileage may vary. Right hand side, I have the MacBook Pro. I kind of align it at the underside of the other screens, so it's so I can have the whole workspace, and that's kind of stuff uh, I don't have. I, I shouldn't forget about like to dos or like look at this or a podcast or a video or like uh, a bit of a bit of memory. It's a smaller screen, so I don't use it for working at that much. Um, other than that. Um, I have a green screen behind me, which now shows a team photo from uh, South Africa or Summit. I, I bought a, a bit of an over-the-top microphone, right. uh, a Rode Podcaster. The webcam is a Log Logitech. I want, I want the new one, the USB-C one, but this one is fine, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, yeah. I have I, I mostly room my hands with mousing too much, so I have two mouses, one on the left, one on the right side. Oh, so you're, you're also, an ambidextrous mouser? I became one after I busted the wrist. Oh. I even have problems right now where there's, there's uh, you uh, probably can see it, but there's a bit of a red patch here. So I, I gotta, gotta pay attention. Now Microsoft is known for making the best mouses in the world. Um, so both Microsoft, both corded, so I don't have to swap batteries. And um, I got some, some nice speakers and a Alexa device. So if you want to play some music while I'm working, I can. But I noticed you use that. headphones and I haven't been using headphones at all. Why, why do you use headphones? If I'm using headphones and you aren't, everything is fine. But frequently I meet people that don't work at the company um, and they tend to not use headphones. If you're both not using headphones, the echo cancellation tends to have trouble right. cleaning everything. So, so you get you get speech which is a kind of compressed like you can't hear what the other person is saying mm -hmm. so in order to allow the other person to not use headphones i have to use them they're in our handbook and these are like 15 dollars ones there's the best i could find they're um really light so that's what i like wow. about them um, yeah otherwise you get sweaty ears it's right. super annoying. but these ones um are open ear so you 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 don't have this pressure on your ear they're super comfortable. They're not 
on ear but over ear so you don't your ears don't hear and i can i can wear them for eight hours 10 hours 12 hours without uh getting anything uh so now what what I mean, notifications do you get or not get so what things do you have to go check versus what you get notifications on yeah um as a ceo you can become more and more reactive i'm not super proud of how reactive i am um slack notifications is the most important thing I have to be, well, I, I want to be available to other team members. So I get those. Um, yeah. Email is not something I'm on. I'm, I do it once a day, maybe twice a day. So totally different than most people. Um, uh, our EA looks at the email and uh, Cherry will highlight if there's any message that comes up that's important. Uh, but, I, I can I get so many messages I can just can't keep an eye on that it's it's too distracting um, so, and, so that, those are the primary things do you look at the to do's in GitLab as sort of a, a, a place that you go to kind of just see what's in your queue is that the main place you go or do you do something different I wish I could say yes I made the original proposal for to do's I think they're amazing for me it's I, I can't keep up so my recommendation is if people have stuff for me, just have mentioned me in Slack and I'll, I'll get to it uh, very quickly instead of waiting for me to catch up with my to-dos. So your SLA on Slack is kind of where, where, you, where your presence is? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. And then channels in Slack. So I think what I've realized is I, you know, I use Slack at Ansible and at Red Hat, um, but the number of people and the amount of activity on Slack here is, you know, four X what it was even at the largest organization there. Um, cause they were in little organizations. So, and the question, and so much happens there. Do you organize your Slack in, in any particular way, like channels, other? Yeah. I, I used to read a lot of Slack channels, uh, like in the beginning, all of them and then hundred of them. And now it's down to like 10 of them. Right. I, um, I, I have a CEO channel, so I'm, I'm there all the time. I, there's a general and a thanks channel, which I think are amazing. So I hang out there. Um, used to hang out in the marketing channel. Uh, but now you can, you can do start doing that for me. Right. And then I really rely on people at mentioning me when they need me. So I'm, joined in a lot of channels, but I tend to not catch up. Disadvantage is a bit, if someone mentions you, you kind of feel them compelled to also read a bit of the history in the channel. So it's a bigger thing, but right. I think that's worthwhile. I just found the barbecue channel today. So I'm pretty happy about that. Oh, there's so, so many good like hobby channels. Yeah. Uh, um, cute photos is also if you're, if you're oh. feeling a bit down. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, any other tips or tricks? Uh, you know, I, I think one of the things to adjust to is with all of these mechanisms, it feels like, you know, information overload a little bit, but the reality is I just ha don't have my rhythm down yet. I think that's the reality. Um, and yeah. we'll, we'll get that. So don't overdo Slack. Slack should be for ephemeral stuff and it shouldn't be where an important decision or important thing where you want many people's input on is taken. That should be in an issue. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah. when it starts Slack starts feeling like an all day on meeting, uh, that's bad. Um, so try to push people from DMS, direct messages in Slack to channels and then push them from the channels to the issues. And uh, that, that should be how we work asynchronously in the end. Slack is, is not an ideal way to coordinate complex decisions. Yeah. The other little trick that I've figured out, this seems dumb. But as I lose track of time, um, because I'm not moving, I'm not going to another room and people aren't getting up and saying, oh, we need this room or whatever. So I lose track of time. So, and I never used to have my clock on my computer keyboard. So now I've made it so where it's always there because I'm, you know, I find it to be five minutes after and I'm just like, oh my goodness. So, um, yep. especially people that kind of let meetings run long without noticing it's i think that's a bad practice so try to try to keep to short meetings so hour long meetings end in 15 minutes uh half hour meetings end in 25 minutes so there, there's a bit of time between each meeting to check your messages and go to the take a bio break and go to the next one yeah okay good thank you for the tips yeah thanks for asking okay